Hey guys, welcome to the shortwave radio channel. Another little video to to talk about how I do things that maybe you might inspire you guys to do it also. Uh, one other thing I want to buy, talk about is if you own more than one radio, and a lot of you that follow here have more than one, some of you because of me, some of you because you just already had multiple radios, some of you have only one, and that's fine. If you have only one radio, um, you know, you still um, can do a lot and, and use it. Tune around and, and listen to the bands and, and tune slowly and check out every frequency range at any time. You never know what could pop up. But if you have multiple radios, like I do, one of the things that's really cool is sometimes to go and check some websites for utility signals or for uh, any type of unusual signals or international broadcasts and put your multiple radios to use. And an example of that is, for example, I will tune the ICOM here on a frequency where I know something unusual could happen. And I'll leave it there with a volume just high enough that I hear a static. And if something goes through, I'll, I'll hear it. And then you take another radio and you, you know, take that other radio and and tune something else. And maybe you have an international broadcast at the same time. Well, if you've got a lot of radios, you know, tune all those signals together and, and monitor. Um, if you have more than one radio, one of the cool things to do is keep one in what I call monitoring mode. Put it on a frequency where you might have heard something in the past. Put it on a frequency of something you never heard, but it's advertised or it's, it's listed as this. An, an example. Um, one of the things I did quite a few times is put my receiver on a Canadian Forces frequency on 11 megahertz because I heard some communication once, but these are the types of frequencies where communications don't happen very often. So you know what? You put, your, you put one of your radios in monitoring mode on the frequency with a volume just high enough not to annoy you with the static, but high enough that when communication goes through, you'll hear it and you'll be, look, something's happening. This is sometimes the way that you will be able to monitor uh, things that are, you know, just little conversations here and there and in, in between it could be hours before there's something else. So that's a good way to use one of the portables or one of the radios you have. You put it in monitoring mode, you leave it there. Use another radio and do something else with it, scan the bands, or maybe listen to your favorite international broadcaster. Um, this is one way I do it. I have the luxury of having many radios, so, and with the multi-coupler I got here, plus the Yesu on the NFED, I could actually listen to five different frequencies at the same time, which is kind of cool because it makes me, um, it gives me the possibility to tune different frequencies I know that are unusual, just leave it there. Um, you got multiple radios, you like air traffic control. Why not punch in on several radios, you know, the different frequencies of Gander and New York. And instead of waiting on communications coming through on one frequency, you'll be actually hearing more communications going through and, and maybe even uninterrupted communications because there's always going to be some communication coming through on air traffic on one of the frequencies you choose depending on how many radios you've got but it's a lot of fun to to try these things and and of course you can also compare sometimes i'll have the same radio on the, all the radios on the same frequency trying to compare you know it's like which one gives me the best audio the best performance uh, you know which one is better at this task and um, then you have an idea, you know, for this task, I'll, I'll use this radio. You know, an example that I've always, one of the things, you know, when we say radios are not perfect, I say it all the time. One of the things I've always hated about the ICOM here is its harshness in the audio department. And if you guys follow me for a long time, I, I need to find it and put it back. I have this DSP unit, which was a Radio Shack DSP-40. And I, off, I, I most of the time I've used it with the, uh, the Kenwood, I've used it with the ICOM, 
uh, many videos of years past, you'll see that it's sitting on top of my icon. And one of the main reasons I did that was not only because it gives me some interesting features that I loved, but because it the audio department of that amplifier helped me reduce the harshness of the ICOM ICR-D500's audio, which is, unfortunately for a tabletop, not, you know, one of the crappiest I've heard. So if, if I had a, a, a big flaw to give to the ICOM ICR-D500, is its audio department, which is deficient in giving us a, a real nice, uh, rich audio. You know, the Kenwood R5000 I have is so much better in that department. Even the Yesu FTDX10 is great in that department. That's where you see that not all radios are equal, even if they're expensive. Uh, there are things sometimes. You know, there's audio peak filter and all of that you can use. It doesn't kind of help. Um, there's something about the way the, the audio is punched through in the amplifier stage that just doesn't sound as great or as good as others. And of course, you can use different speakers, try different things, uh, but um, you know, not all is equal. Um, even in in the desktop tabletop, you know, the why hams choose or try to find a um, you know a specific model. Well, often it will have to do with some of those comments, this radio is better at doing this, and this radio performs better than the other one, and so on. Um, another idea also on monitoring mode and monitoring in general is if you are capable of putting up multiple antennas, why not try radios and have each radio on a separate antenna, a different one, that might give you performance of frequencies and hear you things, have you hear things uh, that you won't hear. You know, a great example that I have here is uh, my Yesu FTD X10, which is on my uh, wire. It's an end fed, uh, half wave end fed wire in the back. And for, you know, after doing tests, well, everything above 15 megahertz is received better on my Yesu with the end fed. Uh, and, and by the way, it's some of you might say, well, it's, you know, the Yesu is better. No, I've, I've tested the end fed on portables. And on 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 the other radios, the ICOM and so on, it's definitely the antenna above 15 megahertz receives better, has less noise on the higher frequencies, even though it does have noise. And overall, I get more signals above 15 megahertz. So having different antennas sometimes is cool because for me, it helped me get what is average and put it into the it's really powerful uh, category. A great example of that is if I tune 25900, the uh, BBC frequency, I will have it real clear on the, Ye on the Yesu because of the NFED. Well, my MLA 30, it's there. It's noisier. It's not as fun to listen to. So you see that there's advantage advantages to have different antennas if you can. If you only have one, it's fine. You know, we do what we can do. Uh, like I say, I'm fortunate that there are things. I have multiple radios. I have the capability of having more than one antenna. You know, this is the cool thing. It's not everybody that can. You know, some of you live in, in condos and in areas where it's like, you know, just having an antenna out is is horrible and you got to make sure that, you, you know, nobody sees it. Um, and unfortunately, that too many of that exists. Uh, but there are ways to do it. You know, some of you have been using MLE 30 loops inside, indoors, near windows, with some decent success. So it's all about trying to do the best we can. And this is what makes the entry level of the hobby a tough one for a lot of people. There's a little knowledge you need to know about that and fiddling around with antennas. Uh, not everybody wants to do that. And it's definite that some people... The way radios are advertised, some people just think we're going to buy this little box, I'm going to hear the world. You know, it doesn't exactly work like that. There's more to it, and there's, there's a lot of work involved in understanding what you're going to hear and, and, and how to hear it and why you don't hear it. Uh, that's another, a, whole, a whole other thing. But uh, enjoy the hobby, guys. It's, I'm trying to, to push everybody into listening to different things. And you know, I see people saying, well, I should do that sometime. Don't 
think you should do that sometime, do it. You know, get a, some time, a weekend, something, and it's like, my weekend project is I'm going to do this. My weekend project is I'm finally going to try to understand why or how to listen to that signal or this signal or, or use this software or, or learn more on how to use the online resource we have on the web. Uh, this is all things that, you know, you need to, to master and to, 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 in order to have the, the maximum fun with all the radios you've got. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.